Hi, we're at the boat show in Dusseldorf. It's a huge uh, show, trade show for boats and everything to do with water sports. And obviously there is a one area designated to diving, scuba diving. So, but you can see it's huge. <coughs> we're gonna be focusing on what is new in the scuba industry. So join us and we'll go booth by booth. We're now here at the Halcyon stand and with us is Mark Messerschmidt. He's going to talk us a little bit about the Halcyon lighting system. So we have a couple of different ways to uh, proceed. This is called our flare. And the flare is, is our first uh, high intensity light in, in LED. And uh, we have two, two uh, settings, a low and a high. And this battery will last about five hours. And so you get a fair amount of time. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite lights is because it's adjustable to all sizes. I can put anybody's hand in here, so big or small, I, it'll fit my hand really quick. I can carry it, what I do as an instructor, I carry a spare one of these in my pocket. So it snaps in like that, I put it in my pocket. So if I'm ever teaching a class and I have a problem, I can always take it out and I said, here you go, here's another light. But it'll fit on anybody's size, gloved hands or a little girl's hand, because of the adjustability of the handle. Yeah. So this is the Flare 1.0. That's the same thing with uh, what we did next. Then the beam. What, the, what kind of beam does it make? A wide beam or narrow beam? It's it's. Uh, we use it for communication, so it's a, it's sort of in the middle. It's not very wide. It's not great for video, but it's terrific for communication and still filming large passageways. So that's what it's designed for. Nine degrees, ten degrees. Um, more thirteen, eighteen, somewhere okay. in that range. Okay. Yeah, it's a little wider. Uh, and in fact, how we set this beam, we set it when we came out with the 2.0. The 2.0 is twice as bright as the 1.0. We have more power and uh, a stronger emitter, but it's fully focusable. So we're able, instead of trying to move a reflector, we actually move the emitter inside back and forth. Yeah, okay. So it's it's very nice way and it's all contained. There's nothing in here that's getting caught. So it's become a very popular light because you can adjust it. So we have a lot of people that do exploration in caves and wrecks and such. So they will uh, have the beam set at maybe 13, something like that. But then they want to look down a tunnel and, and then they tighten the beam. And it's the one that goes into a clay, they yeah. can throw the square. Nice square, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then it's like a laser beam through the water. For example, I was in a cave and I was looking for where we left our reel and I couldn't see and I tightened it down and then I shined it and I, it reflected and I picked it up really fast. Yeah. So it gives you the flexibility of that, uh, also two settings. And in this particular model, we have a corded version which doubles the battery time from the handheld. Both are available in handheld or corded. And, uh, but going back to what I mentioned before, why we picked the angle there is we let a lot of people use these focus lights and they all came back and they were almost always set the same way when they came back. And so we said, all right, that must be the most popular setting because that's what people settled on after after they played with it for a while. They go, okay, this is what I want. So then we said, all right, that's the most popular. And then we built that light to match the most popular setting. So it made some sense. Um, so this comes out, this produces about 80,000 lux, and lux are lumens per square per meter. meter from so, yeah. yeah, so that's how we try to measure it, because lumen is, is interesting, but not terribly useful for a diver. So uh, so there's not a lot of other lights out there that have a focusable beam that you can bring into 80,000 lux, yeah. and still last from two, two and a half hours on a handheld version to five hours on, on the larger battery version. So that's their family of uh, flare and focus lights, and then we have new lights under development that are that you'll we'll see later this year. I can see the the scouts have also been upgraded to LED. They have. It's a um, they have it's been a staple in the industry for yeah. a long time. Yeah. It's uh, it just seemed like it was necessary to do. Yep. And and uh, and in fact, if you have one of the older versions of scouts, you can just you can just buy the module. 
Wow. And, uh, and interestingly that you brought this up, uh, in the fall of last year, just a few months ago, we upgraded these so they're actually brighter. We haven't made a, a big deal about it, but as people start buying the new ones, they're going to be even brighter than they've been in the past. As the technology changes, we continue to upgrade and mm -hmm. sometimes it's not worth making a big deal about or charging people more. It's just we're able to do it. It didn't cost us much more, so we said let's just do it, and, it over and then people will be pleasantly surprised. What happens is though they look at their old one, the new one, they go, what happened? But yeah. It's, yeah. We, we improve the quality. And, uh, don't necessarily make a big deal about it. And then there's the three in the in the two battery version. Yep. Uh, the two battery people typically will wear on the right side mm. if they have a canister, and that way it doesn't crowd. Or if they're a shorter torso, yeah, that's yeah. the difference. But they're uh, pretty much bulletproof. We yep. uh, when I'm making a big deal about it, I'll I don't want to ruin this one, but I'll throw it on the ground, or I'll, you can even drive over it with a car. So it's yeah, uh, it's a solar rod and yeah. it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going anywhere. So that's nice. our present family of lights. So thanks, I appreciate the interest. Sure. If you have questions, give us a thanks for your time. Uh, thank you. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Another reoccurring theme we seem to be seeing here on the dive show is uh, the, um, you know, the expansion of head-up displays. In this case, it's a, a normal computer that's mounted on a mast, and it displays your computer information on your eye, like a head-up display. Obviously, head-up displays are coming a little bit from the rebreather world, and now we can see that they're transitioning into recreational diving as well. But um, it's funny to see how these things are getting smaller and more and more smart. This one is actually quite nice to look through if you take the mask on your, on your face. I'm happy to introduce these scooters to you. It's quite an innovative new model, a new way of doing things uh, regarding propulsion and uh, yeah, technology for navigation underwater. It's a very innovative new scooter, which has no axle, uh, but the motor is in the water, and uh, so the scooter can be flooded, it will run, for example. It's a very silent machine, and it's developed by the principles of aerodynamics. I can show you. We have here the stator. Is it called Aqua Dynamics? Yeah, but the company who builds the scooters makes airplane parts and they found out that their simulation software is also valid for water. Yeah. So they developed the whole thing uh, in virtual reality and wow. uh, took the same principles. Yeah. Amazing. And uh, what it does, it has a special stator that eliminates the torque. You can drive the scooter virtually with one, uh, two fingers. Some people even use a bungee here and drive it without hands because it will just run. Wow, no torque. No torque. Because of this special stator I show you, it also has the uh, shape of a wing and has a special angle and it will eliminate everything that disturbs you while driving. Also, it will not create the turbulence, no. but you have laminar uh, flow, so yeah. you can go down to the ground and it will of course only little silting. Yeah. yeah. Then the next thing is the propeller is sitting magnetically on the engine. So mm -hmm. please do this and just take out the screw. That's it. Wow. Motor part number one in the water, not moving, creating a magnetic field yeah. which drives this screw. And the only point of contact is this small ball here, the rest is an air gap. Let's put it on again. That's it, ready, done. Then you just put in the stator, you secure the stator here, yeah. ready, go. Wow. The scooter has nine forward gears, meaning I can now just click and drive. During the drive, I can switch to see my parameters like rotation, humidity in the uh, electronics compartment, temperature, and electricity it takes. 
now my buddy comes and overtakes me and I want to follow. I make a double click, it accelerates to maximum speed. This is all the noise it makes, it will not get any louder than that. A rebreather diver will first see you, then hear you. Then we have a turbo mode, I can accelerate to even more speed and the electronics gives me all the battery can give me. That can be like 1200 rotations per minute, 1.6 meters per second. Yeah. And then I can program the time when the scooter falls back to gear zero, for example if I have to do something with a line or so, yeah. to avoid unintended starting. Now it's doing nothing. And this scooter, oh yeah, it does something, I explain. Uh, from zero, with yeah. a double click, I can go to the last selected gear and start yeah. again. Right? Then I wait my five seconds or I decelerate. Mm -hmm. And this is the first scooter who has a reverse gear. Reverse gear. Reverse gear. <laughs> like this, if you have a rebreather, three bailouts, and you are in front of the rack, you, you don't have learn. to hustle like that, you just park out. Like you learn the back gear. Yeah. Or you have a small current coming from the back, you just stand still because you have the reverse gear. Then um, you can program how fast the scooter will accelerate or decelerate. You can program that it must be driven with two hands for, for te uh, teaching. Um, you can program that the scooter reduces the maximum power down to 60% so a student will never run out. You will ever catch him because it can cannot go so fast. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you can also uh, eliminate the double click or eliminate the reverse gear for students because as a student you must remember that you have to push against the scooter otherwise it's in your face when you go backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you flip up or down. Yeah, yeah. what's up. Um, that's it. The scooter, the small version here with a small battery can go for 200 minutes or 15 kilometers. The big fella here with a 2000 watt hours battery can go for 700 minutes or 30 kilometers. And um, we also have here the first underwater navigation system mm -hmm. with inertia uh, calculations and speed sensor. So I program my target, let's say my target is 10 meters deep, 100 meters to course blah blah blah, and it will show me the course how to go and uh, follow up. It's speed through the water through this one. So with the current there might be a little bit of accuracy, but um, all in all you have a very high position with this one, which can be ordered as a Yeah. I'll we'll cool down the battery, so we have a controlled battery management. The battery is capsuled, so this can be flooded, mm -hmm. the scooter will run. It's charged from the outside, you remove this plug here, charge the scooter. So if you're on holiday or if you're on a weekend, just leave the scooter shut, charge it, go for days, and you can control humidity and temperature from the outside. If humidity raises, open it, dry it, close it, go again. That's it. And here you see the electronics compartment is also capsuled. It's a lithium battery. Yeah. And that's why humidity will rise when the lithium uses. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, and it's also capsuled. Water can come in here, but not in here. And you see there's no connection between electronics compartment and motor outside. It's shut. So no problems with friction, with seals, and stuff That's like that. you can just turn it here on the show. Right, right. right. No problem. All the other screws don't yeah. burn out the yeah. seal. Yeah. Exactly. That's mainly all about it. They're probably, what, like 15,000 euros? No. The small baby is... Uh, Without accessories, uh, including German VAT, is 6,100 something. The biggest one, if you like, will be about uh, 12,000. Now we moved a little bit away from all the gear and we were starting to go into the travel section and the first person we encountered was Sergi from Spain. I personally have been to the south of Spain for a lot of diving and training and it's a beautiful site and it's a kind of underestimated area because everyone talking about the Mediterranean in the middle but southern Spain has a lot to offer. 
Sergio, what, uh, what makes it special for people coming to the south of Spain? Well, it makes it special because we have a lot of reds from the first of our world, two marine reserves. One of them is really famous because uh, it's the most famous uh, site uh, for diving in Spain for the Spaniards. Uh, we have caves at the same time. We have caves in the in area. area. One of them, uh, Cove del Agua, is the most famous cave in, uh, in, in Spain because it's the only one they know they knew. Yeah, exactly. You're gonna have you have two dive centers, right? Yeah. And they're relatively close together. One offers a lot of nice with the cave, and the other one, the great wreck diving and the nature reserve. Yes. So there's something for everyone actually. Yeah. You can do everything in one one dive trip. Perfect. So next trip, guys, think of Spain instead of Malta or Egypt. You get nice food and nice diving. Nice dancing. And nice <laughs> dancing, yeah. We're here at the Serenity Concept and this is another innovative product, two products about diving lo diver location and underwater navigation. So we're here with Claire and she can explain us a little bit more. Yes, hi. So this is a diver's locator. This is a new system to localize the divers. Uh, each diver uh, fastens a transponder on uh, his bottle. Uh, we have a sonar system to immerse under the boat and the dive director on his boat, on his pad, can see exactly where all the divers. Because just before the dive, he enter information, the name and the level of each diver, and he can know exactly what is the distance for each diver, the distance of the boat and the divers, his depth, and his, yes, and his dive duration. Is there a, a recall system that you can push a button and it's we have a come home? No, it's not possible. No. Maybe in the second version, but not, not for the actual recall. No. We have a second product, it's a bulk locator, and the name is S2 Sonar. The system is the same. The transponder is not on the bottle, but immersed under the boat. Um, and the diver on its watch can see exactly the direction and the distance to go back to the boat. It's a touch sensitive screen, but it's not working underwater. Underwater, you just have to do a wrist movement to change the screen and to know exactly the direction and the distance to go back to the boat. Okay. But not only because it's um, a dive computer too. Okay. You have three modes. You have apnea mode, bottom timer, and algorithm decompression. Okay, wow. It's a Bullman 16. Yeah. It's a new generation of dive computer because no button, no plug, no battery compartment to be fully waterproof and uh, to charge it by induction. Induction wireless charger for the watch and for the transponder too. Okay. Well, and you can dive around 20 hours with the battery. Okay. Great. Well, thank yeah. you very much. Thank for you so much. You're welcome. Here we are at Diver Tug, who just uh, launched a tiny little entry-level scooter. It's going to be retailing for a thousand euros, 45 meters per minute, 110 meters maximum depth, 60 minutes runtime. I think uh, the scooter business is finally catching up to also the recreational diving market. This looks very nice.
here we are at uh, Gavin, um, a very, very old name in the scooter industry. And now they really have something that catches your eye because there's two propellers. Can you explain yes. a bit more? Yes, um, so this uh, model going to be, uh, will have a bigger engine, so therefore um, we need to have uh, some concept to get uh, rid of torque, which will occur with a big, such a big engine. So we came up with a double propeller which counter rotates. So um, the one propeller will go in the one direction, the other in the other, and that will eliminate the torque. So we have already made uh, first tests once and uh, it is like, like expected, uh, we do not have any torque. Wow. And you see on the side here it says your um, that's specification? Our, that's our target, you know. That's, uh, speed must be uh, greater, uh, bigger than uh, 90 meters per minute. Yeah. And the thrust of course must be bigger than 40, uh, yeah. 400 uh, Newton or 40 kilo. That's very strong. So no torque is... Mark already yep. done and so it's still a, a work in progress. Uh, yes, we're gonna we're planning on having it ready at the end of this year. Okay. Wow. And what kind of market are you trying to hit? It? Is this mostly for the higher so, technical yes, market? I would it's say technical, um, industrial use or military use. Yeah. It's nothing which uh, which uh, like uh, recreational diver can use. Also, if you buy this scooter, you also need to uh, get a certification for it. Okay. You know, you need to get uh, training. Wow, nice. You want it. Um, otherwise, you cannot use it. Why is that? It's because it's safety too powerful? Reason. No, safety? yeah, too powerful, safety, and we do not want to have somebody doing something with it, with it uh, which is not trained. Yeah. That's a nice approach. Usually, yeah. people want to just sell and forget. No, because uh, you know, if you want, like, uh, if you like, uh, if you buy a chainsaw, for example, mm -hmm. you only can use it in public if you have a yeah. certification, right? Yeah. Or license, right? But is would you say it's more dangerous because of the double rotating prop, or because of no, the power? No, just or? the power and everything. You know, it's not nothing like a toy anymore. You know, it's no. uh, serious True. equipment. Like a reader, it's all a serious equipment. You should have a training before you. Yeah, go. I agree. A lot yeah, of people uh, underestimate the scooter. Yeah. yeah. Well, nice. Looking, looking forward to seeing more yeah. about Gavin again. Thanks. Yeah.